what's up everybody and welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noé Ruiz, I'm a designer here at Adafruit and every week joining me is Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody, I'm Pedro Ruiz, Creative Tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D independent projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That is right, this is a show we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for all you folks. Welcome, it is episode number 247, we're live streaming all the different places and we're going to jump right into the show with this week's coupon code. It's NEOSTAR, so if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, definitely use coupon code NEOSTAR at checkout. There's a little coupon box. I'll get you 10% off everything in the shop, except for a couple things like gift certificates and those subscriptions to Adabox. Everything else is fair game, even the big stuff like 3D printers. We have some freebies going on. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, let's do that together. Adafruit.com slash free, and then you will see there's some new stuff. Let's check it out. We're giving out some Blinka stickers for orders that are $49 or more. You get that free CircuitPython sticker with Blinka the mascot for CircuitPython. For orders that are $99 or more, you get a free Permaproto half side breadboard, lovely piece of kit. For two, orders that are 200 or more, you get all those things and uh, free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get all that stuff, plus a Circuit Playground Express. Very cool. So again, if you want more information on the deals, adafruit.com slash free. This stuff just automatically gets added to your cart anyway, so you don't really have to worry about it. But if you want to see what you get, we got a website and a sub page to give you all the details, even though I just read them all out. Cool. Got some more house cleaning stuff. When it comes to shipping, we have lots of shipping options. Uh, one of them is a same-day delivery. If you are a resident of the New York City area, certain zip codes apply, go to adafruit.com shipping for more information on that. We have a weekly newsletter that talks about all the new products that are added to the shop as they get added every week. So we have this once a week newsletter. If you want to subscribe to it, go to adafruit.com newsletter. There you will pop in your email and subscribe to it because we don't automatically do it to folks because we think that's spamming and spamming is bad. We also have a daily newsletter. This one's more a categorical. So we have things for CircuitPython, 3D printing, biohacking, the general electronics, I guess you can call it, mm -hmm. DIY stuff. So check out adafruitdaily.com, standalone website. You gotta go over there and check the boxes and add your email if you want to get the sort of a daily digest of all the projects and happenings and those different categories that we mentioned. All right, I think that's the housekeeping stuff. We still have a jobs board, which is great. Definitely check that out. If you're a maker looking for some gigs, there is a great uh, job port posts up there. Um, and if you're a maker employee, employer looking for employees, you can find them at uh, jobs.adafruit.com. So check it out. It's free to make your profile, both makers and employers alike. All right, um, we're going to do some tweets, make sure the tweets are all out there. All out. Coupon code's been sent. It's up there. Don't forget, the coupon code is NEOSTAR. Saves you 10% on most of your order, except certificates and subscriptions. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of that. Expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Don't worry, there'll be more coupon codes tonight and tomorrow. That's right. Um, yeah. Coffee sip, and then we'll jump then right we'll jump into in. this week's project. Yeah, I left my coffee over there. <laughs> I'm like all sad. <laughs> oh, man, I'm all coffee. So we're still celebrating five years of 3D Hangouts. This week we're actually celebrating the full rotation around the sun by Starman. <laughs> really? Which if you guys don't remember, <laughs> it was <laughs> the dummy payload test for SpaceX. They launched their prototype spacesuit, which of course included the helmet that the um, dummy is wearing inside of the Roadster that they shot up into space, had to do some rotate or orbits around the sun and Mars. So I always wanted to build a sweet helmet. Yes. And most of the ones that are in the costume shops, um, I, where did I leave it? I Looks, know. you know, like one of the old ones. Yeah, this is kind of the older. It's not modern. Dome. Yeah. Um, they look kind of bubbly so yeah, bubbly. this really awesome user on thingiverse mm -hmm. uploaded this really sweet looking 
SpaceX helmet. It's uh, Nathan O on Thingiverse. So definitely give him a shout out for this sweet uh, three printed kit. He was able to have it actually articulate. I think he actually designed it in on shape as well. That's right. Super sweet looking. You can see some it's of the- It's huge. Yeah. It's but it's split up into pieces so you can manage it, I mm -hmm. think on some of the bigger printers. Uh -huh. and, and he did a really uh, good job of putting the, the way that it's assembled. Yes. You can actually use heated inserts. You could, yes. And three screws to assemble it all together. I just used a bunch of hot glue since uh, it works pretty well. Yeah, you don't need to assemble it. Yeah, so here is the entire printed helmet. The does include the buck that you can 3D print. So you can, if you have a vacuum form. I have a buck right here. You can actually make this out of the, uh, you know, tinted um, like P, Pet G or Hello. something like that. Yeah, so doing that involves a little bit more stuff. When I mean a little bit, I mean a lot, a lot of stuff. We did. Yeah. There's a couple of great tutorials out there on the on the YouTube's on how to create your own uh, vacuum formed visor. We'd still be doing it. Yeah, I was <laughs> looking at purchasing one. It was like just for like one project. It's not really worth it. Doing all the, the casting, and fiberglass. you know, do all this fiberglass. We watched a lot of uh, videos from Bill, Bill Doran on oh, yeah. how Bill to Doran's do it. The man when it comes to yeah. That. We sell electronics. We are not. Yeah, yeah we're not going to spend them a couple. Of weeks, that is way on the too visor. much to do. So, uh, brought this guy into Mesh Mixer, okay. and uh, you actually have a whole layer by layer on how to set up a lattice structure. Sure. Yeah, they have some great little patterns and stuff that you can apply to models mm -hmm. to make them low polygon or Veronoi patterned. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of tutorials out there now too on how to create that with Mesh Mixer. Free open source software, so you can download it and and start working with it. Yeah, and so just, you know, banging polygons. Exactly. So the only thing I actually did was act, uh, bring this inside of Mesh Mixer, uh, remove the bottom part here, and yeah. then applied the lattice texture to the upper part up here. I left all of the flash on here. Yes. That's around, it's like the extra bit that is on all the sides so that we could uh, have like a structure around it so I wouldn't need to use as much support material. Because I actually tried doing this with the uh, Daft Punk helmet and because it didn't have any support structures, it didn't print as well. Yeah. Uh, so with updated profiles and adding the support material on there, it came out excellent, as you can see on the lattice version of this yeah, visor. Yeah, this was printed with no support material as well? Uh, no, there's actually oh, just there supports on the sides where the, okay. um, where, where sort of the like the connecting little last lattices are overhead? in the air. I don't know if it's gonna fit, but we can try. Yeah, just to get a see. better idea of the. You the could clean it up a little bit more, but. Yeah, oh yeah, I actually didn't do any cleaning yeah, on this it? one. The one I sent to the office, I did a ton of cleaning on oh, it, okay. uh, which isn't too much. It's just going in with one of our uh, hobby knives, and just going around in a circle to clean all of the little overhangs that are on there. But it's not too much. Yeah. You can see right there. It's great because you can see through the helmet. You see through the helmet, especially in warm environments like here in Florida, I can actually wear it without dying or having to install fans to, to have like some sort of ventilation in there. So that is another plus of not having to do the visor and yeah. of course all the crazy steps involve that. So okay. let's go into the learning guide. Oh, actually continue talking about it in terms yeah, sure. of what it can actually do. So it's running a circuit player on Express. If you go back to the uh, wide angle. Yes, sir. So last minute, I did have uh, the Blue Fruit BLE in there to be able to control uh, the colors and the animations and all that. But with the Circuit Player on Express, you can add motion effects. So when you lift up the visor, yeah. better in the shot, you can see that it's warning me that I have no air. Boop, boop, boop. Uh. You can actually add sound effects as well with the uh, Circuit Player on Express's built-in little buzzer speaker. And there is plenty of room to add additional uh, like a little amplifier and an oval speaker on here. They all fit within the top part of the outer shell that is actually articulating with it. So all the components are actually moving with it. There's nothing that is like on the, uh, the lower part that has to be connected. So there's no wires that are moving with it. Yeah, if you're new to Circuit Player and Express, it really is an awesome piece of kit. The accelerometer is built right into the board so you don't have to solder, solder an extra board to it. So that's what it's I actually there. did. The only <laughs> external thing here is really um, the NeoPixel strip. It has mm -hmm. built-in NeoPixels, but obviously you want to have them across the, the visor like exactly. that. Exactly. So you can attach it uh, either with alligator clips or by soldering it directly or even sewing to it. A lot of different options with yeah. Circuit Playground Express and a lot of different 
code you can do. You, right now it's running make code, which is a block-based editor. You can drag and drop. It's got a graphical interface. You upload via USB, which is great. Mm -hmm. Web USB on a browser in Chrome. Yeah. So crazy. So that's make code. You could also do Circuit Python, which is great. Um, we wanted to do make code just to kind of get some more make code projects out yeah, there. A little bit more easier for people to edit the animations and colors for this. So if you go to overhead, you can see where I have some of the USB ports. Uh, the one in the middle is for the Circuit Playground. And because it doesn't have built-in charging, I added the LiPo charger we yeah. carry. That'll be this port here. So you just plug that in to recharge the battery and then a slide switch to easily turn it on and off. All it's doing really is just cutting the power that is that it's getting from the LiPo charger. Okay, so you can to... recharge the battery. It has a, a battery port that you stick in there mm -hmm. and uh, does all the voltage regulation for you. Yep, added some weather stripping or weather strips on the bottom here too. Weather strips, yeah, foam. <laughs> little foam type stuff to make and it nice it in and comfy. And you can see where the attaching parts are. Again, uh, you can assemble this with the heat inserts that we carry in the shop sure. and M3 screws, or you can just hot glue it if you don't need to take it apart. You can see we have a high density Neo pixel strip on the inside that's aligning the top, there's the bottom chin and the forehead section of it. But in the guide, I recommend getting the lower density one just so you have a longer battery life. And uh, I actually think it looks a little bit cooler with the, like the blobs of um, LEDs that are on your face when it's low density. Yeah, different facts for different yeah. densities. Okay, you mm -hmm. want to jump into the learn guide? Go ahead and jump into the learn guide for this guy. So head on over to learn.adafruit.com. You'll find the learn guide there. The homepage overview it talks about all the parts in the project. Mm -hmm. Let's see the Circuit Playground Express. Mini skinny NeoPixels are really hot right now. <laughs> yeah, we actually they, uh, are tossed locked. out all of our non mini skinnies because a lot of the projects that we, we have to add. We did not toss them out. We put them in the garage. I mean, consider yeah. tossed away when yeah, yeah, yeah. you can no longer see them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely recommend swapping or sw switching over to the mini skinnies just because they're like half the width of a regular uh, NeoPixel strip. Again, we have a weird pricing issue here. They're not $84. That's oh, yeah. the whole reel. For like if a four you want panel. just the, you know, one meter, two meters, you want to go. All you need go. is a meter. Seventeen dollars, which is better. So mm -hmm. All you need is a meter, and this is how uh, low density they are. They got mm -hmm. a little bit of space in between them. You can cut them, solder to them. Uh, you can also sew them, I suppose, with those little holes. We also have them with black PCBs and white PCBs, when and I used uh, both. Uh, I used, used the black. white on the top, and then the black on the bottom chin, just so it blends in with the aligning that's on the helmet. Okay, so you have your options. Maybe mm -hmm. get more a bigger reel if you want to do more projects. Yeah, definitely pick up the four meter. Cool. It will be used in all your projects and all of the projects going forward where you've switched over to the silicone stranded wire. I love this ribbon 10 mm -hmm. wire one because yeah. it'll give you enough for the USB, little DIY USB uh, jacks that we had to build for this. Yes. So definitely recommend picking up a bunch of that. It's using a 1200 milliamp LiPo battery, which give you a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Nice and skinny, fits right between the inner and outer shell of the helmet. Yeah. Uh, I will recommend getting the reversible USB cable. Uh, I'll swap that out just because it's cool purple and reversible. Yeah. Uh, one thing too, one of the main heroes of this uh, mm -hmm. that I don't think we've shown before in projects what is the little LiPo charger and how yeah. to attach that to a Circuit Player Express. Yeah, we'll have to add that in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, other things include the slide switch and the JST extension cable, and that's just cutting bar. power. Oh, here it is, it's on the sidebar. Because the, again, the Circuit Playground doesn't have an easy way to turn the power on and off. Yeah, if you're bored, if, you're, if you're, your microcontroller doesn't have built-in LiPo charging, charging, this is a great way to add it. These were designed, well, actually, no, they're, we have a different one that's designed for the trinkets. This is more yeah, standardized. Yeah, that would kind be the backpack. What yeah, you're talking it also about. has a jumper here, 500 milliamps, so you can you can change the, the rate, the charging rate to go mm -hmm. faster for the bigger ones. Yes. If you have smaller ones that are below 500, you leave that jumper alone, yep. like the 150s. Otherwise, your your life cycles, I think, your recharging cycles diminish. So this is a nice little lipo charger, super small, great for embedded projects, and you can. Uh, you know, attach a switch to it. It's got extra power and ground rails on it. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, slap that on your microcontroller and get USB charging. 
right super on handy. You still have access to this. You can remove the outer shell from the inner shell. Mm -hmm. All you do is... Uh, it's not fully um, embedded. You still can get access. You can still get access to it, but you don't want to sit there and you know continuously take, take the shells apart. Yeah. So it's a lot more easier to just make little USB connections that can um, route that to an easier to connect yeah. spot. Which we're gonna cover now. Let's go to the next page. We covered everything. Circuit diagram wise, this is a great way to visually see where all the wire connections are. You can see how the the, the lipo charger is kind of. All it's doing is just cutting power to the JST. Right, there's a switch here that will cut that off. That's what the on-off does. And that plugs in directly into the Circuit Playground's battery port. Yep, so there's no funkiness you need to do to the board. It's just the JST that's plugging in. Yeah. It's the only simple. funkiness you have to do is to build those little USB extension wires. We do have a pair of easier-to-connect DIY uh, USB cables. The they, use the, the, they use these little ribbon cables that just snap in, mm. but they're a little too big, just a tad bit too big. Mm. Alright. So we're just using... Oh yeah, you can look them up. Is it DIY? Well, that's the DIY ones we're, we're using. Mm -hmm. these we have the these other ones, yep. Those are the ribbon cables that are attached to them. Right. And they that's are actual. on a PCB. Right here we have them in a uh, number of different orientations and connections. It's any of one of those. My. These are all HDMI. Uh, it, when you one. click on them, it, it should show like the family of them. Yeah, it's HDMI. It's fine. I know, but just to they're just show a little bit it. too big for this project. There they are. There you go. And we have them in right angle. We have them in straight. Yeah. So if you want to build something, and space provides it. I guess you could pick one of these up and try these out. A couple of folks got them already. They're out of stock. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you don't know about Yeah, but it. it's just that uh, where the PCB uh, little mounting part for that, that's yeah, where it's, it's just a little bit too yeah, big. Because it's a little bit chunkier than a connector. Yeah. Because you have the PCB plus the little ribbon area. Mm -hmm. But that's what it looks like. You get pretty small. They're meant for like drones and stuff. It's for the uh, monitors. And monitors. Drone monitors. Yeah. So there you go. We got those options as well. But we're mm -hmm. going to build our own cable. With yep. The ribbon cable. This is what, what the circuit diagram looks like. After um, you've built everything. After you've actually built it. Which looks great. Look at those ribbon cables. It's a nice way to uh, practice <laughs> soldering with a magnifying glass. Yeah, I don't know what the pitch is there. Probably like one millimeter. That's not that. It's not that too bad. terribly small. No, it's not. I'm still using like the the what is it the hoof so, uh, soldering <laughs> tip. <laughs> Big fat chunky one. Yeah. Cool. And we I'm have wire clear. links here as well, which is very useful for the these specific project. These are specific. If you're going to mount them in the um, same orientation, the same space, those are the exact lengths you guys need for all of the cables. Nothing like following a tutorial and no idea what the wire lengths are. I know. <laughs> actually, it's too late. Uh, it's funny that all these tutorials are actually meant for future us when we forget. Yeah. <laughs> what the length or what the code or what the so order of operation was. Document it. <laughs> exactly. Document as much as you can. Moving on to the code, as you were saying, this was all programmed in Microsoft's Make, Make code. code. This is great. So to set up your Circuit Playground with Arduino, with Circuit Python, with Make Code, it's always the same stuff. Double tap the reset button. It puts it in the little bootloader mode. Plug it into any computer, and you can flash it by just dragging over a file that you download from MakeCode or CircuitPython.org. In this case, you just download directly from MakeCode and then drop the file in. Once that initially is set up, you can use Web USB, so you no longer have to keep dragging over a file. It'll just go through the USB cable because it'll pair to the USB, uh, web USB. Yeah. And we can demonstrate that here by just opening up this tab. So when you click on that button, edit and make code, this is the shared public code. It comes with this, this simulator. So if you don't have the hardware, you just hit the simulator and there you go. Obviously we don't have a strip here, but uh, if you had some interactions like buttons and sounds and, and onboard lights, they would all be interactive here. And this moves because, well, this is the way you simulate tilt, Shake. shaking, yeah. that sort of stuff. Uh, so yeah, here's the blocks that actually shows the code. Um, and then Super simple. Want, and there's a JavaScript mode. Python mode is coming. And then you I hit edit. In That'll the, open it. the beta there's version. There's a beta version, yeah. To get the beta version, all you do in the URL, you type beta after the slash this before the is pound. This all you need to make this program run. Um, so on start, we are setting up our NeoPixel strip. It's an external strip. And we can assign it to whatever pin. Right now, it's on pin A and we put in the pixels. So whether you're using a low density or a high density, you'll want to update that here. 
uh, and then we want to set the brightness. So if it's too bright, you want to do like a global brightness, you can use the set brightness uh, block to tell it, tell the strip to be a certain brightness when it starts up so it's not so bright. And then we don't have an actual while loop. We don't have uh, a forever loop at all because we're using the on blocks, which are kind of doing these event-based triggers. So whenever the bo board is tilted up, It'll, it'll play this animation. This is the candid animation. There's like six of them here. They're a part of the light blocks. When you open up the light blocks, these are all the uh, onboard NeoPixels. When you want to do external NeoPixel strips like we're doing in this project, you have this subcategory called NeoPixel, and that one has all the same blocks, but modified for external strips. And you can see here they all have that pink little drop down that says strip. So you can have multiple strips. If you want to have multiple objects and animations going on multiple strips, you can do that as well. So there we go. Now we duplicate that block, and now we can change face up, free fall if it's falling, tilt right, tilt left. All of these options are here, and you can modify them as well. But uh, we found that the orientations work best when it's face down and being tilted up to do these animations. So when you, tilt the, when you flip the visor up, it'll play these nice little sparkle animations. Right now we have it set to red, but we can change that. And then on face down, when it's in kind of rest mode, because the board's actually upside down yeah. in, in the regular mode, that's where we're doing this comet am animation. And we're um, passing through that animation. We're looping through it uh, every half a second. And that's really it. Super duper clean and simple. We can add more to it if we need to. Yeah, make code. Excellent. And uh, you can switch over to JavaScript mode. There's a Python mode coming as well that we talked about. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There's on. You could also do it on clap. If you wanted to clap it on, you can do on sound because it's built in. Mm -hmm. Microphone uh -huh. is on the circuit playground. You might want to play with that because, well, it's inside the helmet. Yeah, we tried it out. It didn't look as good. The animations with the uh, lights on your face. Uh, no, if you want to explore sound. more functions and gestures and more logical animations, stuff, more logic can... stuff, check out the full playlist from John Park. He's got yes. a ton of Make Code Minutes. It's actually what we watch to figure out how some of these blocks work. Exactly. <laughs> so definitely check that out. Yeah. It should be a prerequisite uh, before you even start any of this. Excellent. And then we have the whole setup here. So you can uh, download the UF2 right now and get it running. Check it out. Cool. Moving on to 3D printing, this is going to take quite a while, which is why this is one of the first projects we're showing for Halloween, uh, since it takes about four days to print these on five printers. Yeah, so it's definitely going to take longer if you only have uh, one, one that can fit the volume of the full size of the board. You can always scale it down as well. Uh, I think it would, you'd be safe um, if your face is like, I don't know, from ear to ear, small. like about 20 or about 20 centimeters, I think it is. Um, you should be able to shrink it down maybe 85% uh, to make it fit. Yeah, but if check you want the Thingiverse page, there might be some people that have printed it smaller. Yeah. So the main thing here for the visor, uh, you click on that so I can see it better. What is it? Yeah, you just scroll down. Yeah, so the main thing was adding support material on the sides just because you can kind of see some of the uh, lattice uh, structures that are being held together at the edges are sort of floating in the air. Uh, that was the uh, only thing you'll need that for. So Otherwise, when you set up supports in Cura, are you setting them up manually? Yes. Okay, that's uh, an external plugin that does not come default with Cura. Yeah, is that so, correct? Yes. Okay, so inside of that, Cura, I was like, wait, where is it? <laughs> they hit it under Marketplace is what it's called now, and just type in support, and there are two different plugins, one for uh, custom supports and one for a support blocker. Okay. And uh, you want to use those to place the pillars of where the supports will come out. Otherwise, you're going to get supports in every one of those holes, That's huh? It's going to be way too and crazy to clean up. If you just hit print, yeah, it's just going to take forever, mm -hmm. even more so. So Being strategically on. place your supports. Yeah. So you want to print this with, uh, you know, as big brim as it will fit in your volume. Pretty about, thin, right? So About four millimeters or four lines. I mean, or, like the whole thing is pretty thin, so you do want more surface area on your bed. And the yeah, way to do that is exactly. to use a brim, not a skirt, a brim, because yeah, that mm -hmm. attaches to the perimeter of mm -hmm. the part itself. Yeah, you need these to be pretty flat, so when you join them together, even if you're using the heat set inserts, you, you don't want any gaps uh, to show up. Yeah. All right, brim, seven millimeters. 
support, yes. Yep, we use the deburring tool to clean those up after they come off. Yeah, deburring tool is great. It's normally meant for cleaning up pipes because it's like got this curved mm -hmm. um, thing. Yeah, it's beautiful for cleaning up yeah. circular. Deburring tool. So you can uh, spin around yeah. with you. You'll see them in the PVC aisle of Home Depots and Lowe's. Lifesaver on holding your parts while you're gluing them or attaching them together is this Panavice Junior. Panavice. Uh, yeah. Small enough, but still big enough to hold these uh, parts. Yep. So you definitely want to have something that's holding your parts up level while you're connecting yeah. these. I think this is better than like those bench vices because it's uh It's because of the articulating articulation arm. Of the, of the clamp clamp. So I use those heavily for... Um, just gluing it, you know, letting it dry. Just, just like holding it because after you start gluing all your, all your pieces together, there's no more flat parts, so yeah. it just rolls right off your table. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're going to need something to hold it. Yeah. Cool. As we were saying before, these are optimized to print with the heated inserts to attach, uh, but uh, I wanted to get this out pretty quick, so I the used glue contact nice. glue and then hot glue. And then that tip from Jimmy DeRosa using the air duster to quickly cool down the hot glue worked upside down. so good. Yeah. Yeah, so you take the uh, air duster, turn it upside down, and then spray where you've added your hot glue. Mm -hmm. And it looks super cool when it like freezes it. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Well, once you get those pieces, you'll super end up with just. Together, here we go. Yep, you'll end up with your outer piece and your inner piece. And you can just attach the lining on that, and you're good to go. Assemble. Looks like a toilet. <laughs> oh, the toilet seat? That's what Brandy said. Moving on to assembling the components for this. We we'll start off with the Neo Pixel strip. I'm going to measure how long those are, and I have all that listed there. Uh, so it doesn't matter which uh, density of uh, strip you use, you can just size it. Yeah, the length of the strip itself. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Strip. So you're going to need to cut two of them in half. It's one to go across the top of the head and one to go across the chin. So you got two strips cut from one. Mm -hmm. And then we'll uh, cut a little 40 millimeter long piece to act as a little connector. So we'll Look just shape it into a ribbon cable is. Jeez. Yeah, we'll you just shape it into a, um, into a little elbow shape so they connect together. Yeah. That's why we like the ribbon cable because they're already attached yeah. and it keeps it nice and clean, grouped. Nice you can and do that with bundled. sheet shrink, but it's still it's like It's an adds, extra step. It's an extra step and it's still not clean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's still uh, like, I really wish we it's had these in clean. different colors because I want to throw away. I don't know how they would do that, but yeah. I know. We threw away all of our non-silicone ones, and then when we got all silicone, I want to throw away all the non-bundled. We non didn't throw bundled. anything away. It's like, you right know what there. I mean. We put them they're away. Right there. <laughs> put them away. Yeah. Put them in storage, never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, you color-coded them here. That's, uh, that's scour the net that's for... Up next. This is oh. what your strip looks like yeah. uh, when you solder them back together. They look super clean. Because of the ribbon cable, again. How many times oh, it notice too cable? that I had to remove the silicone uh, sheathing off right. there. Right. Because none of the glue was able to... None of the glue sticks <laughs> Even the E6000. Yeah. There's, did, did we get some silicone glue? Uh, yeah, that was before. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have time to use it. But there is some silicone glue. And I didn't want to wait around with all these clamps on it to wait to dry overnight. So, hot glue. Chances are you're going to be right a day before your Halloween party and you're going to be like... Especially with the Hot length of how glue. long this takes. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that sheathing right off. Cool. All right, USB extension. This one's a little tricky because uh, there's two. It's, it's double sided. The what? USB. Oh yeah, connector. yeah. It's a little bit tricky, but um, just check out the circuit diagram there. I searched all around Google for a clear one, and I just had to make my own because yeah. there was. I don't know. I guess people don't make cables or something. I don't know. I don't know. But here's a nice little breakdown of how each connection is hooked up and the orientation that the, uh, the, the jack is facing. So you can connect yeah. all those. Yeah, it's really important the way these two are flipped this yeah, way. Yeah, sorry that it's like, it might be a, little be a little difficult to solder if you have like shaky hands, but it was the cleanest way that we can uh, route the jacks out of the, uh, the helmet. Right, and this is only if you want USB recharging, right? Uh, no, this is for programming and okay. charging. So right. you have to actually build two of these. Okay. Just because, you know. Yeah, you're bringing that USB port up front to where an area of the helmet where you wouldn't be able to do because the board is circular and has a certain width. 
Yeah, so because of the shape of it, you still can access it, but the USB cable is not gonna fit in that. And if area. you put the circuit playground in some other orientation, um, your... tilt up is no longer tilt up. Yeah, I know. So you really have to be caveats. thinking about where am I placing this and is that gonna change the accelerometer orientation? Mm -hmm. And if it does, well, you need to update your code, which is easy. There's different ways, tilt right and tight left, like I was showing. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a great way to kind of bring out that connection outward, is to make your own cable, especially when you're embedding it. <laughs> so that's what we got. All right, yeah, back we'll over. Leave off, uh, oh yeah, USB diagram, USB. check yeah. that out. Definitely want to be careful with that and follow it to a T. Here's what the two look like when they're done. Mm -hmm. right. They There's just your, plug right in. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. flexible. You can actually bend these to curve around the lining of the, the helmet. Yeah, cool. Moving on, once those are set up, uh, you can actually probably use a little bolt-on kit to connect the NeoPixel strip. Oh, the I just, screws? Yeah, the screws. Yeah. But I chose to just solder it, solder to it directly since it is the smallest, um, like, height-wise. Yeah, I think you would add some a little bit of depth to the it. The flatness would no longer be touching the part anymore if you add the screws in. You would, you would oh. have to kind of you have to kind of glue the screws in. Yeah, that's not to gonna the, work. Yeah, okay, so, so you're probably gonna work. have to solder to it. That's why we did it this way. Yeah. So, and uh, here's a good look of inside the helmet with the components mm -hmm. placed in there. So yep, pretty so. centered the PCB, and it's mm -hmm. upside down in this orientation when yep. it's. Right side up. And because it's so wide, you actually have a nice uh, flat area to mount the Circuit Player and Express mm -hmm. and the LiPo charger right next to it. So they're not actually, they're not over like this huge curve where they're not actually touching right. the shell. Yeah. So you can actually insert your uh, hot glue or whatever way that you're gonna adhere it to the, to the shell there. Cool. And the next one is looking, laying out the strip, mm -hmm. kind of following the contour of that black outline piece. Yeah. And then, uh, do you attach it to the black part? Yeah, we'll yeah it's attached there. to the lining. But not before attaching this LiPo pocket for the battery. Yay, so we actually, I think we talked about it last week. We've uh, This is one of the ways we like to mount uh, batteries in a protective little pocket. It's printed in Ninja Flex, so it has elasticity and it's rubbery and it has a nice padding for the battery. Uh, yeah modeled two different versions. I think we had like the 500s and the, the 2000 milliamp hour ones that, from like years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I guess we never made one for the 1200. So yeah, maybe. modeled that guy, which, oh crap, I need to remember to upload that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little sleeve. Yeah, nice little sleeve with a little uh, pocket at the end to let air come out so it doesn't you know, keep it suctioned on the inside. Ninja Flex is great material, it's flexible, so it's sewable, it won't crack. You mm -hmm. can run it over with a car and it won't break. Keeps At least it the shape. Won't. Keeps it shape. Yep, so we're just attaching that with more hot glue on the bottom there. Wait until it cools down or you can use the air duster method before inserting the battery on the inside there. Yeah, and then, uh, here's your whole kind of setup here. Oh, the strip actually goes over the cable? I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm right over it. Sweet. Yeah, and then those are hot glued as well. Yeah, because otherwise it'll cover the Oh, the, the cable LEDs. is also route, uh, managed and hot glued, I think, too. Yeah, just it's to keep nice it down. Mm -hmm. Cool. That yeah, looks super clean. Yeah. Nice. All right. Let's and jump back that over. should be the little orientation for all your boards once they're mounted. One of the last steps is attaching the visor. It goes in from the inside and just align that, make sure that none of the LEDs are being covered. And then same thing with that, just hot gluing all of the edges. I think if you actually go with doing the visor, like with, um, uh, what's it called? Like PETG or whatever, the trans translucent material uh -huh. to actually build the visor, uh, I think you'll probably have to attach it the same way because I didn't see any other way to like sort of screw it in. Right, no, it's supposed to be like glued in. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have to do your own padding? Weather oh, strips, sure. yeah, because it, it's not gonna fit on your head as nice. It'll just slip around if you don't have padding to sort of center it around your head. Yeah. And the last step is connecting the inner and outer shell. The little hinges there, you'll insert at an angle. And they press fit. Press fit, and they rotate around each other. Pivot. Pivot. Pivoty pivot. And then you can and that's pop pretty. in your Tesla and <laughs> 
wow the park goers. <laughs> People are driving by, wow, going to space. I hope it looks like we're in a like, terraformed yeah. uh, Mars there at the bottom yeah. of the sky. There's a beehive, I have to, a space beehive. I'm in my beekeeper <laughs> suit. Yeah, we got this get up uh, on our Amazon. Yeah, we looked around for a couple of spacesuits. Uh, yeah, I like wanted to be the one to model it, but it was too big for me. Yeah. <laughs> it only fits it's you. It's a tiny bit taller. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. And there it's you go, fun. a nice, awesome, modern take yeah. on being an astronaut for Halloween, yeah. being so the Starman from SpaceX. Super cool. All right, and uh, let's head on over to the, over here. So we uploaded as a remix because we uploaded the visor, the visor itself. I'll be uploading the it's, Ninja uh, Flex remixes. box as well. Someone else remixed it. Oh yeah, he actually has two different versions for uh -huh. the back. One that has one that can be glued and one that has the heated inserts. But that does uh -huh. not look clean at all. So that's uh -huh. why I chose to glue Didn't everything. Yeah, even oh, cool. T said in it, it doesn't look pretty at all. When yeah. you have to do all the screws. Okay. Cool, so check it out. Versus slow. Check it out. If you want to be Starman for Halloween, start printing now. It's going to take quite a while. Yeah. Excellent. All right. We'll check it out. And then don't forget coupon code NEOSTAR on those NEOPixels. Get 10% off. Pick up Circuit Playground. Ah, there's too many comments tab. in the chat to go through all. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we'll keep moving. All right, any questions though, we'll, we'll pick them out, but it looks like it's kind of chats back and forth. Sweet. All right. Are we ready for the prototyping? Cool. What do you prototype? I think so. All right, cool. Let's jump All into right. this week's prototype. Let's see if we can run through it. What do we got? We got about half an hour, that's good. All right, so a couple years ago, we made a, uh, a, we do a lot of soldering, right? So we want a good way to dispense our solder wire. Solder wire is stuff you use to attach wires together and things, right? What is solder wire and what is soldering? Well, there you go. Um, this guy is a little Adabot. He's our happy-go-lucky um, mascot. <laughs> I mean, Caitlin's dad's gonna have fun with this one. Um, it's, it's Adabot, he's a cute little robot. He, he's the Elmo of electronics. He teaches the ABCs of electronics. So uh, making him a solder dispenser was really cool. This is all one piece. Well, this piece here and then all these little um, pieces that we painted. Sorry to buy your ears coming to come off. So I wanted to make a new version of him or, or her, general neutral, uh, where he has a crank. Again, not gender specific. It, he, no. Ah, so terrible at this. Stab it. <laughs> so he's got a crank and uh, we, we 3D printed these cranks that are print in place and uh, it's just got a nice kind of hinge and pivot to it. And so we wanted to make it um, so that we could use our hinges. Um, these hinges use the exact same connecting bit. That might be a little bit too tight. Yeah, it's Don't too break tight. It. It's, a, it's got the same connecting bit uh, for the rotary encoders. So it's like kind of the exact same thing, just a little bit shorter and printed in these different colors. So that's how it works. Um, he's dual extruded uh, with the, these two colors. And then the pupils are an extra bit that's printed in black. You just super glue it on top. Uh, this is cool. So his top is removable, his little top cover. And the thing about this is it's printed with the gyro infill, and that makes uh, these infill patterns really nice and kind of springy. And if you set your slicer to say, I don't want any solid tops and bottoms, then you get nothing but infill. And you can make these cool kind of grid, really easy to make grid, because I didn't design this. This is all a part of the infill pattern that's a part of the slicer, particularly Cura and you can make these really springy kind of surfaces and make a great speaker mesh uh, or any type of mesh that needs to be kind of allow air to flow through. So I, I made this, it kind of looks like a brain and it fits on top of Adabot's head so you can see how much solder you have left or solder if you're in Europe. And uh, this is an extra piece that just pops in. Um, yeah, this is a, there's a little locking mechanism here uh, that snaps this pin in and then this uh, comes off think like that so that uh, you can see how that works and then this piece is press fitted and rip that out of his mouth a little hole there <laughs> and uh, here is the uh, the cutout at the bottom is just a bolt so this is all one piece and then this cover piece kind of slides in like that and then this locks in there 
that. Kind of looks like it's his brain. There's that click I was looking for. So I'll release this uh, in a couple, a couple weeks, or maybe I'll release it later, because I have the files. But to do a little assembly guide, I definitely want to do one. And a little short video to go with it as well. So i got to work on that. Um, but uh, it's very cute, very fun. Yeah, um, um, Yan Yanni's saying that we should add the e ink eyes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> That'd be also pretty the, sweet. Uh, the Halloween Have eyes. a blink. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, it might be a little bit too big, though, the Halloween eyes. Somebody on Twitter, uh, Tech Technology, Tech Noel, he uh, was like, hey, why don't you make that into a, uh, a, a floss, a dental floss dispenser ah. for kids? And that's a great idea, too. Um, any type of wire string would work in this situation. And I've been meaning to really use these print in places, uh, these print in place hinges, cranks, um, more in designs. And this is a, a really practical one for it. It's a pleasure to use it because um, I hate having to, you know, wrap up the the solder wire every time. So that is uh, what I'm working on. All right, worked on. Kind of done with it. I just need to document it. And then uh, the folks can build their own. Taunch is real nice to you get nice and loose in here. So it has like momentum. And you spin it up. I, I couldn't think, come up with a better way to dispense it other than his teeth. You put a little hole in his teeth. I didn't want to put a hole in his head or anything. So that's cool. That's about it. Really simple, practical little part. It takes maybe an hour to print or something. And I think it's a good, because uh, we did this in 2017. So a couple years later, we have a nice printed place hinge. And uh, I guess you could fit two spools in here. Looks like there's room in there. You can push that off and have two in here if you want. Makes it a little bit heavier. Oh, and these are snap fit. You can tell by the snap fit features there. So these little, these little notches there and these little registration keys, nubs, that click in like that. And I really like that gyro infill. Definitely try that out. Remember, turn off your bottoms and top layers to zero. Set those to zero. Set your infill to whatever percentage. And if you have a slicer that does gyro infill, try out the gyro. There's also like honeycomb pattern that you could do here or a triangular pattern that you could do here. And uh, make some really cool meshes and things. I'm surprised it hasn't broken yet. Very cool. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Still working? Still got the mics. Hey, bots. Hey, the bots botting over there. His pupils are bigger. You notice, like, his eyes are a little bit smaller and his are bigger. Who's mm -hmm. more cuter? Probably the one with the bigger eyes. <laughs> <laughs> bigger eyes. Always cuter. Yeah. His little antenna is a crank. How funny. All right, I'm done with that. <laughs> are we ready for uh, shop talk? Talk about these eyes. Talk about these eyes. So this is the Halloween mask. Is that a quick transition? No, it's good. All right. So there's a Hall Halloween mask. We just got this in. It's um, brand new hardware. Check it out. It's the Monster Mask. It's two displays. Uh, they're 240 by 240 displays. And there's just so much stuff on this board that I, I just can't talk all about it. So I'm just going to show you. Plug it in. It's battery powered with Wrong this way. little battery. Wrong way. Thank you. Audio jack, accelerometer, 8 megabytes of, of uh, SPI flash, um, two displays. <laughs> Uh, NeoPixel support, uh, expansion ports for I squared C or SPI. Come on, where's my Foki focus? Focus, man. Is that better? That's better. There you go. So let's see what we did. Let me turn it on. There's an on off switch right there. I'll turn that on. It's going to boot up. So Phil, Philip Burgess did an amazing job on creating the code for this and making it so that it is configurable. Um, so you can update a, a bitmap image file, and uh, the code will wrap that in some 3D eyeballs and create a custom eyeball pattern, which is what I did here. This is the first thing I did. I got myself Photoshop, and I went ahead and did this. This is uh, supposed to be the shedding gun from Sasuke, Uchiha Sasuke from the anime Naruto. And uh, it's got to be... Careful with how you want to do your textures. There is a learn guide that came out yesterday that talks exactly about all the different details and things that you can change, um, which is really great. You, you don't really have to touch much code. You can if you want to 
update some of the things like the size of the iris or the color of the, of the background here. You can change the eyelid um, shape when it opens and closes. You can uh, change the scalara, I guess what it is, the white stuff here. So you can completely customize this thing. Again, Phil, Philby did an amazing job on making this configurable and run on this hardware. So yeah, that's sh the, sh the shooting gun. Sasuke's shooting gun. And just amazing artwork. Um, from fellow lady uh, who who, uh, who did the artwork. Sorry, the name's escaping me right now. But yeah, check it out. We just got this like yesterday, and that was the first thing I did was was uh, play with some some eye textures to make that. And I so have this cool. little battery there, so uh, you can have it, it. It does have a built-in lipo charger, so you can charge the battery as well. Um, but obviously, the idea is to make uh, frames and frame and stuff. attachments so yeah. they can go right into your costume. <laughs> Shitting gun. I forget how he does it. Yeah, is it shampoo? No. <laughs> shampoo? <laughs> yeah. That's a different anime. Oh, ninjutsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's different. I think it's a genjutsu. No, that. that's Rock Lee. <laughs> no, a jin, jin jitsu. It's like the, the <laughs> eye jitsu. Anyway, is it still working? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, making monster masks is definitely something you can do with it. And you can put this in props and do all sorts of cool stuff with it. You can uh, break is this, uh, this little note here is a capacitive touch. So you can boop it. And then uh, there are little mouse bites here. So you can crack this in half and put these two connectors and have them separate, which is really cool. Also, I 3D printed this uh, stand. I didn't design this. I have a link to it on Thingiverse. But it just holds it up there, kind of. It's a little lopsided because of the battery. But if you're programming via USB, plugs in right there. And then you can just have this on your desk as you're programming and tweaking your eyes. And uh, this is the IPS display. So it's got some pretty good uh, angle. pixels. Good angle view. Yeah. Very cool. So check it up. Um, you can get 10% off if you pick it up now. I think it's in stock. Is it in stock? Uh, there might be a couple left. Let's type it in. It's uh, product ID 4343. I saw people asking out of oh, stock, sorry. So people were asking, can you split these apart? Yes, you can. Yeah, did I, you just I did okay. <laughs> the little mouse bites. Yep. Um, we haven't done it yet, but we will. Yep. So we need I got to the orders on. to make a antenna. You got the orders. Yeah. <laughs> orders from above. You get marching orders. Yes. So we got to make some antennae with the eyes on the top. Oh, crap. I almost forgot. And just have the, just have them move them around like that. A part of their, their tasks is to 3D all of our products. So this is the Halloween. I just finished getting all the components mapped. Um, shout out to JST manufacturer for, um, they have a massive, uh, they have a ton of connectors, yeah. <laughs> a ton of them. And they have models for all of them, which is great. Helps me out a lot not to model them. So uh, the Moldex connectors are here, all the JST, PH, SH. There's a lot of new connectors here in this one. Um, surface mounted buttons. Uh, I had everything else though, like the, the SOICs and the C1206s or something. Yeah, they're all there. The display connectors are there and proper mounting holes are all perfect. And the silk screen is the exact silk screen that's in the GoCAD file. So you can see there, it's got the exposed copper in the right layer. Boy, that was fun. And uh, yeah. So we, I also got the foam tape on the back of the display there. So you can see there's some distance between the display and the actual PCB. That foam tape is there and it keeps it nice and secured, but it does give it some little bit of elevation. So when you're doing something where you're putting stuff in front of it, you definitely want to have that model in there. So that's what we made sure to do. There's also a PDM microphone input, which uses that new quick connector, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this is super interesting. <laughs> they look like the Snapchat Veronica frames. Yeah, it's a gorgeous board. Beautiful. Dana on YouTube chat is asking, will the nose, uh, the cap touch nose, still work after it's chopped off? I no, heard Lamar mention that it, it will not. Yeah. You'll lose I guess that. it uses an extra wire or something. Yeah. 
maybe you could. But you could probably still hook it, it up to one of the. Um, one of these pins. Yeah, here. one of these D two. Yeah. Or no, something. there's no header. There's no feather headers here. Mm -hmm. So you, this is what you have to work with these guys. Yeah. So you might still be able to connect to that. Yeah. Very cool. It's so amazing. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's That's so cool. Oh shit. <laughs> See, going through the notes, I think we continue with shop talk with the CR10. Did I kill the battery already? Yeah, I think I killed the battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a baby battery, and I've, I, I had it running for a while before the show. Yeah, let's go real quick to the Thingiverse page, so y'all can see that it's a. We, we, I shared it on the blog a couple weeks ago as well. But if you want to 3D print the glasses frames. Well, it's more like a glasses stand. I'll pop it in there. We'll go into Facebook. Hey, Facebook. How are you folks doing? How long was the print? There's some questions there. Maybe we'll answer questions at the end. Is that cool? Yeah. I'm going to guess he's talking about the helmet. Uh, oh, is the mic input mono or stereo? I do not know. Uh, the audio out, however, is stereo, which is what I heard Lamar say. Is that it is a stereo audio jack. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, Jose Luis, we should do a tutorial to make a helmet like one of the Daft Punks. That's so great. We did that. Oh, wait, you did. Yeah, I replied to him. Yep, that's we great. did both. Yay. Check those out. Yeah. Try to make it a build so that it doesn't require too much stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm orienting myself. And I think I am oriented, right? No, I'm still lost. No, continue with uh, Shop Talk yeah. with a new printer that we got in. Oh, thank you. You're the man. I'm like clicking through all the tabs. Where nope, am Nope, it's not in a tab. <laughs> Hopefully it's loaded as a video though. We only the first one is. I still get the bed one. Mm, okay. So we'll do the bed next week. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready for it? Okay, yeah, I go, can go, pause go, the video. Go, go. Right, let me double check with the hotkey. We've got eight is. minutes left. <laughs> So with all these big props that we're working on, we didn't get to show the one you're working on. It's huge. Nah, yeah. Maybe Super the next cool. two weeks. Um, we wanted to get another S5, S10? Ultimaker no. S5. S5. So big, but everybody has been getting these CR10s. I've been seeing all the great quality out of them and they're huge. It's like 400 millimeters, um, like four by 500 millimeters. Yeah, they're already on like version five or something mm -hmm. of this style of printer. Um, and they're like the CR10 S Pro. Yeah, so a little bit bigger. and they're like five times cheaper than what Ultimaker is. So right. I wanted to check that out. Um, did a lot of research on it. One of the first things you had to do was like update the firmware and get these new. Holy moly! What is that? Updating the firmware. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, get these new tubes, these new couplers. So pretty minimal in terms of what you had to do for uh, the type of quality though, and the build area, and the quality of it. Yeah. It was definitely worth it. I paused it, by the way. I'll continue. Okay. So here I am just unboxing it, setting it up. Uh, the leveling went really smooth for me, actually. So it's doing the auto leveling. Uh, it's such a big printer that we didn't even consider that it wouldn't fit on our work surface <laughs> on the table. It didn't yeah. fit on our table, so we had to find a different table for it. Yeah, so if you're getting these things, get a bigger table. Yeah, that is the one thing you got to keep in mind. I thought it would just fit on there, but yeah, it was like no. hanging off the edge. The printer's huge. Yeah, so it's using the uh, inductive um, sensor for, sensor for the level, probing. For yeah. bed leveling. So there's no end stops for that, but uh, it did a very nice job. One of the first things we printed on it was this week's Time Lapse Tuesday. The face hugger. The face hugger. Look how giant this is. I was able to scale it up 160%, I this believe. It's a pretty ballsy print for the first print. Right? Let me take up the whole bed and a day of its time. Yeah. That will really show it whether it's a reliable print or not, and mm -hmm. it is so far. Yeah, Amazing. the bed that it comes with holds a little bit too well, so I did replace that. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah. I switched it out for one of the flexible build systems that everybody seems to love. Yeah. And How much is the you'll printer? See why. Is it under 800 It's like 600 bucks. $600. You US. guys are looking for a giant printer. Look at Creelty. They're doing amazing yeah. stuff. It has auto, Open it has a sensing, it has a filament sensor that yeah. works. <laughs> oh yeah. That's that. important. It stopped, it paused itself. Oh gosh. I was able to replace the filament yeah. and it started back up with no noticeable, um, Normally like, the, the first thing we do with a printer that's not an Ultimaker is we set up 
alt, uh, Octo Print right away because you can't you can interface with the printer any other way. Mm -hmm. This one has a built-in touchscreen, so you're able to really yeah, get in can, there and you start see what's doing stuff. Done. Yeah. We're using Cura, uh, a price default price, price, a default. I profile. did do some. I did, did do some, some tweaking? tweaking, as you can see here. It's really stringy yeah. with the first print That's that we did. One All I had to do was lower the retraction speed. Yeah. I think the default's like. 50, I lowered it down to like 45 yeah, there you or something go. like that. W well packaged, shipped here fine. Bought mm -hmm. it from Amazon, I think. Yeah, it was just on Amazon. So oh, if no. there's anything wrong, you know, you can just return that. Yeah, Amazon they have will, a great return policy. Yeah, Amazon will hook you up right away. So uh, <laughs> it's huge. Again, it's not going to fit on your standard table. Mm -hmm. So you might need a bigger work surface. It's got all the things that you need, spool holders and cables and all that. You didn't have to print any extra pieces, though. I, uh, you did, I did, just I did. Spool holder. You just it, to I just moved the orientation of the spool oh, because okay. the they have you mounted to the top, and it has some problems with uh, filament grinding because uh, it's all the way down at the bottom where, yeah. where the uh, Bowden uh, extruder is for that. So when you're upgrading firmware, you like using the little Windows PC? Or is oh, I didn't show it here. Yeah, to. I had to no, use the Windows. No, you did. I saw it. I oh, saw did? the Windows PC. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's like a little, it's like a pie, but has more stuff in it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So uh, Mister certainly is asking, does it support multiple extruders or filaments to print two or more colors? So I I've, I've seen people using the mosaic palette on this. Yeah, mosaic palette is great for it. So that should work. Yeah, one seven five filament. Mm -hmm. Um, it. Let's see what else I'm gonna say. Uh, can it do flexibles? Maybe cheetah, the people, rigid flex, semi flexes. Yeah, I watched a lot of reviews on it, and people are using the 85A on it. Okay. Surprisingly, we haven't done that yet, but we'll report back. Yeah, he was um, heated bed, some... which is important for printing yeah. stuff like ABS. Uh, but PETG, we love, I th and PETG. think they said it can go up to 120. The bed, can the go bed. To yeah, and the nozzle is just their standard. No, actually, the nozzles is it like. I think it could special or anything. No, not special nozzle. Brass. I forgot what the. Yeah, it's probably okay. just brass. But it does have the uh, the new stepper motors that make it nice and silent. It's a EV6 compatible, so EV6. there's a ton of um, add-ons, add-ons, accessories, and yeah, all that that'll work with those. Primo nozzles. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, the stock stuff is pretty great. We haven't changed anything other than the bed, which we'll show the next. The bed, week. the Bowden tube, and the coupler, which is like ten bucks. Yeah. Delivered next day at Amazon, so. Uh, not too bad in terms of some of the other printers. Uh, yeah. So if you're building helmets, props, anything big, and you're looking for something that's sub thousand dollars, six hundred bucks. Amazing, this yeah. is insane. It's yeah. bigger than the S5. I mean, of course, it doesn't have all the um, you know dual extruding or the built-in Wi-Fi and all that. Or glass bed. And glass bed, but it has a lot of other really good features. Um, yeah, the Ulta makers have built-in cameras yeah. and stuff. And uh, just because I keep seeing, you know, we, we keep looping this and I see how string it is. I need to, yeah, need yeah. to jump over the overhead and see sure. what it looks like after you figure out your retraction settings. It comes out beautiful. Yeah, this is the uh, Thunder Helm from the Breath of the Wild Zelda, mm -hmm. The Legend of Zelda. This is so a cool. last Check out year, the overhang maybe? here. Uh, a year or two ago, something like that. Yeah. Prince in the silky. Yeah. And this is Bowden. Bowden. Yeah, Bowden. And I was able to print this, and there was still like a ton of space left on the volume in the print area. So, wow, it looks so good. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks way better than yeah, when like we printed it, it on the uh, Type A machine. Oh gosh, don't even. Yeah. Yeah. And then Time sort of just yeah, yeah, we're running out of time. So go ahead and jump into community this makes. week's community make. Yep, this where we three prints uh, designed from the community. This one is from Halloween themed. So. One ID monster on Thingiverse. It's called the Flexi Face Hugger. It is a print and place joint uh, articulating um, face hugger yeah. from the Alien franchise. And uh, it's a great little print and place design that has articulating hinges. Kind of upset that. Scary as heck. Kind of upset that when we shot the, the helmet video, we didn't have these on our helmet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> then we would have had to build the Alien on right. the SpaceX. <laughs> but uh, we printed it in the Prusa. Wait, no, you didn't. No, I, the little one I did. Oh, OK. Because that's <laughs> what I, No, you didn't. <laughs> well, for the time lapse, I did. <laughs> that's funny. And if you go to the overhead, here's what that guy looks like. The one on the Prusa. Right. Like this tiny little guy. And then you can see it compared to the scram, <laughs> scale it up 160%. How ginormous it is. It's like yeah. the mama and the baby. Yeah, great Halloween prop. 
Excellent right. tolerances in terms of the uh, hinges, where they all... Uh, yeah, they're nice and floppy. Yeah, nice and floppy, yeah. did a good... No assembly. We're just... Gap of those. Yeah, no assembly, comes right off the bed. Uh, the uh, rainbow PLA is really great here. As you can see, the, the transitions of the colors. It started off with this green, then it went... Wait, yellow, then it went to green, and then to this kind of blue. So that's a nice kind of transition there, uh, the rainbow filaments. They have gradational changes, mm -hmm. so you get a nice top, a nice bottom. When you're smaller, though, you don't get as much gradation. There is a little bit of blue here, but mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of layers and it's a little bit smaller, you don't get that gradation like you do with a bigger part. You notice this thing can like wrap. I, I found some way to like wrap it, like tie it. It's like, <laughs> it's like this, yeah, like that. I like could do this kind of dragon tail. Yeah. I like this yellow belly. We should put a motor on it. it yeah, Yanni motors. is saying uh, a soft robotics face hugger. It'd be cool. We have like pneumatics in there. It's just like. Right. <laughs> oh, people want a link to the face hugger. Let's see. Sure. I just got it. It should be this one here. There are a couple of different versions on there. This one I picked because of the, uh, it's like a low poly type. So it doesn't have as low much details poly. for, uh, make it easier for a printer to low handle. Poly. Oh, you got low it. Poly. Yep, I got you. Low poly poly. That's my low poly gun song. <laughs> low poly. Hey folks, you want to win a 3D printer? Everybody says, yeah. Check out the CraftBot competition in collaboration with my mini factory and 3D Maker Noob. Check it out. Submissions close at September 16th, so there's still plenty of oh, time. Yeah. You can check out all the int entries for submissions. Look at that eye. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Oh, man, it's getting crazy now. People are throwing down their gauntlets and making quadped <laughs> dog robots. <laughs> all right, well, there's still a lot of uh, time to do so, and um, great opportunity to win a really nice printer, so check it out. And shout out to my mini factory for being overall a good, good place to upload and share files. Doing really good stuff. So check them out, my mini factory. Coming for you, Thingiverse. That's right. Yeah, let's see if we can quickly like, answer hey. some questions <laughs> on here. Uh, Devo is asking dual Z screws for the um, for the CR10S Pro. Yes, it has dual. <laughs> Funny story about that. Oh, when I hooked I it all up, I know what you mean now. I forgot to actually attach one of the motors, so it printed a whole test yeah. with just one motor. With one motor, <laughs> crazy, and that's it didn't damage it. It oh. didn't, yeah. Awesome. So that's pretty cool. That's very cool. <laughs> Testament to uh, mm -hmm. the print with one motor. <laughs> cool. Let's see, uh, I had some people asking when the Pi badges are coming in. Uh, uh, probably soon sign up for the notification. We did have some Pi gamers in stock. The Ada box too. We're selling the Ada box. Yeah, itself. you can get the Ada box that has it in there. Yep. Don't forget to sign up for the Monster Mask when it's back in stock. We had, then, a, we had them in stock for a couple days, which is like, why I didn't sell out in the first hour? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So. And then discussion on possibly jumping the cap touch after you've. Uh, Broken apart the two eyes for the monster mask. Just flip it on the right place. Yeah. All right, we're ready to. And then suggestions on checking DigiKey. They did have some in stock, so always check DigiKey yeah. or uh, And if any you're outside the states, check out distributor.com. Wait, uh, Adafruit.com slash distributors. Something like distributors. That. Yeah, if and, you just go uh, to the website, it's all. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's at the footer. Yeah, all the distributors exactly, are. and there's a map, and you can see we got a lot of places in Europe, a lot of places in South America, and uh, yeah, active, ha active hacker spaces and active distributors all over the place. So nice little interactive map where you can drill down exactly. We have a micro robotics in Africa. Yep, a couple places in Asia. Oh my gosh, a lot of places in Asia, and a lot of places in Europe. Europa. Cool. Yeah, I haven't actually looked here at the... And here's uh, DigiKey, link to them. Aero Electronics as well. Micro Center and Pyro Money. Mauser, Element 14. And if CompUSA was still around, probably CompUSA. Huh. Might be something. Maybe. That'd be crazy. Coupon code is Neostar, don't forget. Woo! 
And then um, later tonight, we're doing a scene and show. We're doing a show and tell show using the new StreamYard. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah, so if you want to get a link to that, definitely join the Discord. Oh. It's at adafru.it slash discord. Yeah. Or what's the other one? Discord.gg slash adafru. There it is. See, we love Discord. <laughs> 24 hour uh, chatting, hanging out. Yes, and you're a great place to share your projects mm -hmm. and sit in on all the different events that we got going on. Okay, so yep, uh, as, uh, show and tell is tonight at 7.30. Come on by, we invite you to come on by. All participants get a free as seen on show and tell vinyl sticker to put on your project. And or then, if you have a really sweet project and yeah. Phil wants it documented, we'll, yeah, we'll pay, pay you. you. To, to make a guide. Yeah, it's like Shark Tank. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, because no, we actually pay. It's like a honey pot. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, shortly after, it's uh, Ask an Engineer. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight with Lamar and Phil. So you can see a new product. Um, all the news going around. The news. Uh, Python on hardware section. We're talking about all of the new uh, projects coming out. Yep. Uh, Circuit Python. Exactly. And you get to ask Lamar questions. And then the secret projects that they're working on that we don't even get to see until they announce it on the show. That's right. Pretty cool, huh? Very awesome. And then tomorrow, don't forget, John Park's workshop is on tomorrow's Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. He's going to be starting up all of the new Halloween projects, so right. definitely tune in for that. Yep, loads you're going to make code minute. And loads of awesome uh, costumes and props. Yes, shout out to John. He just did 100 episodes, Yay. so he's on 101. All right. Excellent. Don't forget to check out um, all of his playlists, too. Yeah, make uh, code. This is essential stuff. Mm -hmm. Totally. All right, this is 3D Hangouts. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We, we normally do it for about an hour. We're a little bit over time, mm -hmm. but uh, hey, we got a lot of stuff. Yeah, we used to be on Thursdays, but now that's just 3D Thursday blog day. So yeah, definitely right. check in to blog.adafruit.com for all of the awesome community makes that we don't get to cover here, but we do blog posts every hour on the on hour. hour. Sometimes 30 minutes. Yeah, so yeah. definitely subscribe. I think we still have an R RSS feed for anybody what who's is still. RSS? <laughs> Still uses that. Sweet. Well, that's going to be it for the show. We appreciate you guys for hanging in and placing orders. Don't forget that coupon code is NEOSTAR. We're going to have another one later tonight and even tomorrow with John Park. So you got more opportunities, folks, to help keep this thing running. Appreciate you, and good luck with all your maker endeavors. But until next week, don't forget to make a great day. <laughs> See you tonight, guys. Bye.